Hello, my name is John Pendlebury, and I'm with Microline Surgical. This is the first time I've attempted something like this, and really the last two days have been somewhat hectic from trying to pull together the PowerPoint presentation, certainly marry it up with Zoom, get the lighting correct because we're not in a studio. I'm three months overdue with a haircut, and I had to get my, my, have my wife cut my hair, and of course, you know, the makeup had to be correct. Now, I'm only kidding about the makeup, but I did have my wife cut my hair, and actually, I thought she did a great job. So here we are. I'm very excited to be presenting to the Beyond Clean audience. And now for the next hour, we're going to be talking about the reposable solution to laparoscopic instruments. So we're going to be discussing three concepts here. It's what we believe we can offer to our customers. So ready? Let's get started. So the first concept, or what we believe we can offer our customers, provide a system that supports the hospital's efforts to reduce the risk of a surgical site infection. Now, that's an obvious goal for both OR and SPD, and I know you're all aware of it. But let's talk about a couple of interesting points. And this comes from the CDC. Over 30,000 patients die each year in the US from a surgical site infection. And it's the deep organ surgical site infections that involve organs and spaces, you know, as opposed to just the incisional site, that have the greater impact on patient morbidity and mortality. And there's been a lot going on over the last couple of years to certainly try and reduce that rate, right? But the rate of deep organ surgical site infections has remained at 2% for laparoscopic instruments nationwide. So they talk about the primary cause it has been and continues to be the reusable laparoscopic instruments, including module instruments, right? So what happens? It's basically, we're looking at laparoscopic instruments contaminated with dead sterile bio burden after the reprocess and sterilization, and they are the number one source of contamination for deep organ space, instruments that are difficult to clean. And, and really, when you talk to SPD, your feedback, you know, you suggest that the cleaning of the tip if, is the most important and also the most difficult. And it has been suggested that the review of tips under magnification should occur, for this is where the blood and bile burden hides. So what is Microline's solution to our number one concept? Simple. It's a single-use, disposable tip. Throw away some of the risk. That combined with a reusable handle, and we'll get into the handle a little bit in the next couple of slides, but the handle, the interior design of the handle offers a very large lumen for a robust flush. And you'll see that in the next slide. And also the work, the inner working mechanisms, it's two stainless steel lumens, and you'll see that again. I've always been one interested in how things work. And you know, at some point earlier in my career with Microline, I took a handle, cut it in half and started looking at it. And, and so this is what you're looking at. So if I took a handle, halfway down the shaft, cut it in half, and you were looking directly down into the handle, this is what you're gonna see. So go up to the upper right, the peak insulation, that is the black insulation that goes around the shaft, okay? And in the lower right, I have what we call the stationary stainless steel tube. So now that is a stainless steel tube that is adhered to the peak insulation, runs the length of the shaft, comes out, presents itself at the tip of the handle with the threads that you see on our handle. Now look at the upper left-hand corner, movable stainless steel tube. So there was a second stainless steel tube that runs down the middle. That is the movable one. That's the one that actually, when you articulate the handle and it moves the tip, that's the piece that's doing it. And I show you this because we don't have a stainless steel rod that runs down the middle, it is a tube. And so that tube, along with the stationary tube, offers a very large lumen for flushing. And so when you look at our handle, okay, and, and the tip, and so here's what happens. Look, look in the lower magnified view, right? So you've got the tip, okay? It's going into the shaft of the handle. And you see the threading on the tip? That threading there is threading into the movable stainless steel tube. At the same time, you see the threading at the end of the handle? that is threading itself onto the tip. So you get this, this great, these two pieces coming together for this great movement. And what the surgeons feel is this excellent tactile feel. It almost feels like a one-piece instrument, but it's not a one-piece instrument. 
So that's concept number one. Concept number two are what we think we can offer our customers, provide a system for the reprocessing and use of laparoscopic instrumentation that offers greater efficiency to sterile processing departments and the operating room. There's been a lot of discussion about that. I know I've read a lot of the articles talking about greater efficiency and what can we do with trays. So I love this, this view here because uh, it's really our approach, right? We're, we're gonna take the preference card you know, this is what tells you what to pull. And we all know that what you actually use every time is a lot less. And I think, again, there's been a lot of discussion about that within SPD and, and within Beyond Clean. So what is our unique system for laparoscopic instruments? It's the reposable concept. As I mentioned, it is a reusable handle. We have ratcheted, we've got non-ratcheted handles, we've got standard length, we've got bariatric length. That combined with disposable grasper and dissector tips. So here are the picture, you see two handles and you see the sterile disposable tips. So within our portfolio, we've got six types of scissors, we've got four atraumatic graspers and 20 different types of graspers and dissectors. When you look at our reposable concept in summary, what do we want to do? We want to take your set, right? And we're going to squeeze it down. We want to shrink your lap sets. How are we going to do that? Simple. We're going to offer five handles in a set for the majority of your procedures. Five handles in a set. And then an up in the OR, they're actually going to select the tips that they're going to use for the particular case or for the particular surgeon. So handles, SPD, tips, and EOR. So I want you at this point in time to close your eyes and envision, okay? Envision your set right now and how many instruments you may have in there. And consider the benefits of having five handles in a set to reprocess per procedure. And what is that impact gonna be on your turnaround time in your department? And I know your eyes are closed and you're, and you're envisioning this and the sun is out and you're, it's a warm breeze and the birds are singing, right? Yes, that's what we wanna bring you to. Now, in this whole better utilization, we said, hey, you know what? We know it can happen. Well, let's prove it. So we went out and we, we decided to do a time study. We did a time study in two hospitals. And here's what we wanted to do. We wanted to quantify the status quo, right? What is the cost? What is the cleaning? What does, how much time does it take you to reprocess a set? We wanted to identify areas for improvement, all right? And be able to point that out if we, if we could and propose a solution to minimize the hidden costs. What else can we do here? So this was great. I love doing these things because I was a track coach for a couple of years and I felt like I was right back in there because we'd go in there with stopwatches. And so our method was very simple. We were going to go ahead and time our customer doing their existing set. And then we would come in and match it. And so if they had 11 instruments, we put five handles in there and 11 tips, even though they're disposable, remember, and they're not really going to be clean, but we figured, hey, let's do this and let's see what pans out. But when we had to stopwatch, you know, and we were like, ready, set, go, you know, the, and the tech was going to start us cleaning. So we only timed when a human, it was human, was touching the instrument. So during the manual cleaning, we had the stopwatch going. If it went into the ultrasonic or obviously everything was going to the automated washer, we did not time it. And then we started it up again on the other side when they were doing, you know, on the clean side where they were doing the compressed air, the electrical safety testing, and certainly, you know, just getting everything loaded in and ready to go. We went to a, a somewhat medium-sized hospital in Northern New England, and they were fully reusable, manufacturer of uh, reusable laparoscopic instruments. And so what we did, we said, all right, let's just do one type of instrument. So we stay, stayed with the lap coleys. We didn't go into some of the other uh, trays that they had. Now, within their lap coley trays, they had 10 lap coley trays in circulation, and they had 11 instruments in there. And those 11 instruments, when you took them apart, came to 27 different components. And they did about 30 lap procedures a week. And so you're looking at about 1,500 annually, right? So... This is their set on the left, and this is what we proposed, five handles. And again, we went apples to apples with the tips, even though within our reposable system, that's not gonna be occurring in SPD, only the handles. So here are the results. 
So at the top is their current. And it, if you look down through, you know, the manual clean took seven minutes. The other side, the clean side, you know, it was amazing, was took longer because there was a lot more prep on that side for a total of about 28 minutes turnaround time. Now, now again, that's not taking in consideration the washer when it goes to the washer. This is just when someone is actually handling the instruments. And so we did the same thing with the microline and the microline came to just slightly over seven. We were saving them close to 21 minutes per set. And then we kind of just, you know, edited it all down and we, we plugged in, you know, roughly about 539 hours annually. We saved them. We plugged in what the cost was as far as an hourly wage and, wage and certainly the benefit rate. And we came up with a roughly a savings of about $8,600. Now, that's not really the, the important. The importance is this. This is what I tell customers that put my hands up. If it takes you this long to go through all of your sets in a day, and I mean everything, orthopedic, GYN, everything. If we can shorten that up, what are you going to do with this time here that you say? Well, probably a lot probably a lot, all those things that you couldn't get to, that you can finally get to and start to look at other trays also. So we also wanted to do it in a much larger institution, a 640 bed hospital somewhere in central New England. Same concept, they were using fully reusable instrumentation. Again, a larger institution, 29 general laparoscopic trays were in circulation. The interesting thing was they only had five hand pieces, five instruments in it, they really did a good job. But when you went into SPD, you noticed there was a significant amount of sterile peel pouch instruments. So it went somewhere. And again, that is always very time consuming to you know, go ahead and handle those, store those, get them up to the OR, get them back down to SPD. So um, they did a lot of cases, about 350. So very, very busy OR. And, and then again, it was the same, same method. We did their set first. We did apples to apples with ours. Again, same, we put tips in there, six tips in there, even though it's not gonna happen with our reposable solution. And we did the same thing, same thing as far as the timing of when the actual were using it. That was their set on the left. That's what we proposed on the right, five handles, six tips. And again, there was a lot involved in terms of, on the other side, the clean side, you know, as far as uh, compressed air to, to blow out the lumens, wrapping and doing the electrical safety testing was a big part. I actually were doing flushing, again, a concern, flushing with alcohol prior to blowing out the lumens. So, but here is the results. Again, it took close to 28 minutes for them to do their reprocessing of their set. With ours, 12, you could see the savings was significant in time, about 2,500 hours total. We plugged in the numbers, about 51,000. Again, remember this timeline. What happens when we go like this? What else are you going to be able to do there? So that was our concept number two. So let's get into our concept number three, cost containment and what we can offer. Provide a system that offers cost containment and cost reduction in the repair and replacement of laparoscopic instruments. So let's look at that. Now, this is an interesting slide because this is not microline. These numbers here, this is really is what the market has been telling us. So when you look at this, you go 83% instruments on the laparoscopic surgical trays go unused. This is what we're hearing. 17% of the instruments are actually used. That means 83% of instruments are along for the ride. They're not getting into the game. They're just sitting there. But, right, they have to go back down. They have to go be reprocessed, cleaned, put into the sterilizer, go through the rigors of sterilization, right? That happens all the time with these sets. The second point there talks about redundant, 40% cost savings because of redundant instruments. And I've seen this, gone in in two and three and four instruments, the same instrument. I always ask the question, well, wh why four? Well, the doctor only uses two, but just in case one doesn't work. Right, okay, I think we have a solution there. Let's eliminate those instruments, let's get them out. And going back to the 83%, and you know, it's interesting, I always ask the question, I said, we get in, in front of a customer, we talk about a general lap tray, and I go, what do you use for a lap coli, right? And they sit there and they roll their eyes and they go, yeah, it's maybe about two or three instruments. But again, everything else has to be reprocessed, has to go through the system. And the last number down here is $3.19 
to sterilize and reprocess an instrument. And again, so you think about if we can take that instrument, right? And we go from 12, 13, I've seen 14, I've seen up to 16 instruments, laparoscopic instruments in a set and squeeze it down to five. Certainly that's gonna impact your cost. So this is a great slide. This is a microline slide here. And, and it's really, it's, it's, it's our program. It's our total cost of ownership program. That's the way we're going to approach you, the customer. And it's a great slide because everybody knows about the tip of the iceberg, right? And the tip of the iceberg is the top, the visible cost is what you need to spend to buy those instruments and get them in. But, right, it's what's below, it's that hidden cost. This is where we believe we can make an impact in the cleaning, sterilization, and replacing, repackaging, and the repair cost, the warranty cost. All of these factors are things that you're dealing with every single day. And again, the ability to take it and squeeze it down is going to impact all of these areas here. And that's what our approach is. So during the course of the last year and us getting out there, we, you know, certainly heard, saw, and, uh, and listened. And these were, these were the issues that we were hearing. You know, when it comes to the operating, waiting for instruments from SPD, instruments missing. If the instrument is not there and it's not working, it's, that's not really something that SPD can, can help out unless, you know, they can come up with other instruments. A difficulty connecting instruments together up in the OR, in SPD, taking them apart, putting them back together again, right, for, for doing your electrical safety testings. Instruments fail and need to open up a second set. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. Multiple manufacturers in the set, cluttered racks, additional time to set up, all of these going right down, delay, waiting on instruments, staff training, and right on the very bottom, identifying the surgeon's needs. Of, of everything that you gotta do, you have to make sure that the surgeon has what they want there for that case. Very important. Hey, and it's not only the OR, right? The SPD, the, all these issues that we hear and see, multiple types of instruments to clean, you know, assembling dis and, and, and disassembling of instruments, the electrical safety testing. I was in an account that had 14 instruments. They came down from the OR. They had to take them apart to clean them. I had to put them back together again to do the electrical safety testing. And they wanted to take them apart for the sterilization. And then, of course, when it got up in the OR, they had to also put them together. So a need for a rapid turnaround of sets. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah, I think you have. Uh, sending up replacement instruments, staff training, the ability to keep the case load in the short staff. We're going through a situation, COVID-19, and we're all wondering what's going to happen when we come out of this and certainly what staffs are going to look like. So you remember Ghostbusters, right? That was uh, the symbol there that everybody has used from that movie. And, and so that's what we want to do. We want to eliminate the top and we want to bring you to the bottom. Handles coming out of SPD in the trays and disposable tips that are being utilized and opened up in the OR. And that's an interesting concept too, because you could have a physician that say, all right, I'm going to need a Maryland. I'm going to need a fenestrated. And I, I don't know, I may need the, the Alice, right? So you open up the Maryland, you open up the fenestrated and the Alice sits there on the bench waiting to go in. And if he doesn't ask for it, well then, the Alice goes back into the, the sterile area. If he needs it, you open it up. You open it up only when it's going to be used and it's going to be needed. So again, over the last year, we've run into three different scenarios where we think we can support our customers. And that's what I'm going to go through right now. So the first one is what we refer to as the niche player, right? So we go in and um, we do our discussion, our assessment, and maybe we find is a particular problem with an instrument, like a long fenestrated, or maybe a one-piece instrument is difficult to clean, uh, high cost replacing. Hey, maybe we could help you out with that particular instrument. Because when you look at our handle, we like to refer to our handle as the Swiss Army knife, right? So one handle can accommodate 20 graspers and dissectors, four atraumatic graspers and dissectors, and six scissors, one handle. What about a particular surgeon? All right, you got a surgeon, he's got some different needs. He's, he's not happy what he has. Um, you know, the cost for a, a whole set capital is, is expensive. What about a couple handles and allow the surgeon to pick what he wants to satisfy his needs? What about a particular group of surgeons, cardiothoracic, 
bariatric, robotic. I mean, I've been in places where they've opened up a general lap set to get an instrument for robotics. There's an opportunity, again, to satisfy that need with a couple handles and let them choose what they want for their cases. The last one in this niche approach is what we refer to as a, you know, for a particular procedure, offering less stress and reprocessing on your existing lap sets. So you've got 10 lap sets and they're stressed out. What about looking at your simpler, faster, easier cases where you're only using one or two instruments like a lap coli, lap appendectomy. What about those cases where you would go with a micro line system, couple handles and they pick and choose. Now, what does that do? Well, basically your lap sets are gonna be less stressed out. You're gonna save them for maybe your larger cases. Again, instruments that are not being used, they're not going through the rigors of sterilization, you're saving them. So that, that's the niche approach. The second one is the total disposable approach. Yes, we've got customers that are looking at this and saying, wait a second, I, I can control my cost in the OR and SPD by going with the microline handles and the trays and then choosing the tips that we want to use for though each and every procedure. And um, you're only going to use, you're only going to open up and use what you actually need. And it creates greater efficiency for all departments. So that's the total disposable approach. Now, the last one is an interesting one. We call it the hybrid approach. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to use your existing lab sets, right? But you're going to reduce the number per each set. Uh, so what does that mean? So you got 10 instruments in there. And I, I like to say, let's get down to where the rubber meets the road. What are your bread and butter instruments that you're going to need on each and every case? And you go, well, this one only is used occasionally. And this one is only used for this. Next thing you know, you're down to maybe four instruments. So now you... And your own sets have squeezed it down, but then you go, nah, now what are we gonna do when that doctor needs that Alice or the doctor wants that Babcock? That's when you're gonna go, you're gonna have a microline handle in there, the Swiss Army knife, and you're gonna pull that disposable tip when it's needed. So now you've sort of maintained your existing sets, but you have become more greater, more efficient. You've squeezed it down to where you're you're doing less reprocessing of these instruments less repair and replacement greater efficiency you know minimal capital investment with just the handles and you're going to use what you're going to need for each and every case so in closing here our vision is that you know the surgeons are going to have access to all the instruments that they want it's just going to be delivered to them in a little bit different way a little more cost effective way we think we can offer quality reposable instrumentation to the surgeons to be able to satisfy them. And, and we're very confident in, again, the design of our handle when that tip is inserted and what they're gonna feel, the tactile feel that they're gonna get out of using our system. And, and finally, it's, it's all around greater efficiency for both the OR and the SPD. In closing, I would like to thank Justin Poulin for inviting us to be a part of this Beyond Clean experience. I hope it was very educational. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope maybe it stirred some interest. If you would like more information, you can go onto our website, www.microlinesurgical.com, and there's contact information in there. You can certainly call our customer service. Uh, get in touch with one of our representatives. They are sitting at the phone right now waiting for you to call. Why do I know that? Because there isn't a whole lot else we could be doing these days. So again, in closing, thank you very much and please be safe. <laughs>